here back in, uh, what was it, 97? When I first had my studio right up there on the top floor. Uh, needless to say, very, very, very different, very different Red Hook back then. I enjoy going to, the, <laughs> to go out for coffee at Bait, but in those days, there was no place to go. You, you, there, there was the, the bodega across the street, and that was it. Street cred meant a lot back then, and uh, everybody not so much carried, but they had their knives. So that was a little easier to deal with than just getting shot, you know. We used to go to candy stores, you danced, you... In the summer, the one on DeGraw Street, they had a patio in the back, and everybody, the nephews, the owner's nephews, they used to go into the city and learn all the new dances, cha-cha, mambos, and all that, and they used to teach us the dances. This is Red Hook, Brooklyn. From the mid-1800s to the mid-1900s, Red Hook's ports employed a large number of Italian and Irish immigrants. The Red Hook houses were originally built in 1938 to house many of the dock workers and their families. By 1960, the shipping and a lot of other businesses left Red Hook and moved to New Jersey. Unemployment increased rapidly as industries abandoned Red Hook and the neighborhood's economy underwent a rapid decline. They were poor. Very, very poor. There used to be these parts like it's, you would say, all, all houses together with, with the fire escapes going all along and the kids used to so hot. You didn't have air conditioning. A fan? What do you want? So you slept outside. Back then, you could have your door open all night. We had parties every Saturday night. My parents had a little party, car parties. You grew up with everybody. You never had to worry. You could walk. Like, my mother was on president between Columbia and Hicks. I mean, I used to go there over there at night. And you didn't have to worry because the area was always well secure. Columbia Street, even in the daytime, you wouldn't want to walk on it because you don't know when something would come out. That's how it was. Richard Street was the dividing line. If you were on the other side, of, you, you didn't cross over that street in those days because you were liable to get shot. We had a game at night, night game, and, and this cat, man, he was, he was torching this other team. Just bombs, just hitting everything. And this one cat got so mad at him from the crowd that when the game was over, he just went and shot him in the head. It was like out of nowhere. It was just a game. And, and that's when it kind of, uh, for me, I said, you know, I gotta get out of here, man, you know. Now, across the street, there was a drug, a drug den. It was just Macho and, and his merry men would shoot up a shooting gallery every morning. They would just shoot up every morning. We could see them from our window, decide to go away for the weekend. And when, when we came back, our house was empty. Macho and his gang took everything the entire, all the contents of my house. And they stored it across the street, but by the time we got the cops to go there, it was empty. My family owned this house from 1922 until my grandmother passed away in 1986. Wow, 1922, yeah. from where? They um, came here to America from Italy. And actually I have an article somewhere. Uh, my grandmother was one of the ones leading a protest to get the city to build a walkway over the church. They made the Brooklyn Queens Expressway, but for their children, the children on that side there of Hick Street had to go all the ways down to Union. It wasn't, you know, walking all the ways down there and crossing over, and that's how she led the protests, or one of the people in the protests, to get the uh, bridge over the Brooklyn Queens Expressway there by St. Stephen's. Yeah. This building was developed by O'Connell, Greg O'Connell, who pretty much developed the whole waterfront here. 
I mean, I'm not sure how planned it was, but bringing a lot of artists, a lot of woodworkers, uh, very reasonable rate. Um, couldn't expect too many services from him, but you know, you got a great space, great view. There wasn't a huge art community the way it is now. There are a lot of artists of note who are moving in and wealthy artists are moving in. It's kind of like becoming another Soho. Oh man, white people moving in. Now we have police presence. Um, like you can call a cop, let's say somebody gets stabbed and you call a cop, they may not come for like three, four hours back then. Now if you call them, before you hang up, they're at the door. I think after 9-11, there were a lot of changes. I, and I think people had the misconception that if they leave Manhattan, they'll be safer. <laughs> But now I, I'm afraid it's becoming a little bit more like Williamsburg, however you want to frame that. <laughs> um, and because with that comes a lot of the prices and a lot of things that, uh, and a lot of attitudes. But better coffee. There's, there's better coffee. Storm Sandy slammed into the East Coast on Monday, leaving a trail of destruction in its path. Those left picking up the pieces never expected a storm of such force to strike this part of the United States. It devastated large portions of the tri-state area, including the Jersey Shore, Lower Manhattan, the Rockaway Beaches, and Red Hook. A lot of businesses were forced to close, and Red Hook was cut off from the rest of Brooklyn. Down here was horrible. This was all flooded. I mean, I lost all my, my shop. I lost everything. I think what happened was Sandy brought us together. People were helping each other and there, you know, just the sense of community initially was there and it carried throughout the, the crisis and I'm told that Red Hook really came together. Pretty amazing because you had hundreds of volunteers coming out here helping and all of Van Dyke Street was just people pulling shit out of houses and it was six foot high right by the end of the day because everyone was pulling out and then at night the sanitation department come in with their pickers clear it away and the next morning you start all over again there's so much shit that was you know people lost everything